welcome back everybody, welcome back to Blaugrana Planet and today guys we are gonna be breaking down Barca's plan, Xavi's plan in order to stop Kylian Mbappe in yet the biggest game of the season for football club Barcelona. Guys, the biggest game is coming along. PSG Football Club Barcelona, Wednesday, 9 p.m. Stat the Prince. This is, 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 is an important game, guys. A, a game that's going to determine a whole season. A game that is certainly could, that could change the story of this club. That could change the future outcome of Xavi Hernández. Will he stay? Will he not? And Barcelona certainly have a tough opponent. A tough opponent. But historically, let me tell you, historically, Barcelona are probably ahead of Paris Saint-Germain, but certainly right now Paris Saint-Germain has a very strong side with not only a very dangerous player, Kylian Mbappe himself, but also a very serious coach, Luis Enrique, and with a quite of a balanced team. And in fact, Xavi Hernández with a difficult season, a difficult season, has been increasing its level with the squad of Football Club Barcelona to come up to this game, guys. So Barcelona have certainly one personal um, um, defense against this player, Kylian Mbappe. Um, some say he is the best player in the world. I'd say he is the best striker in the world right now. Uh, certainly Kylian Mbappe is in a different level. He can provide dribbles, he can provide assists, he can provide a lot of goals. A lot of disequilibrium. If you can compare him to Haaland, I think Haaland is not close to it's not close to Mbappe. But let's be certain, guys. Let's be certain. If we are realistic and and taking into account that Barcelona is coming as the underdog, I think we need to look at the history of the club. We'll look at the history of the club in just a second. Of course, we're gonna break down on how Barcelona will plan to stop Kylian Mbappe in this video because this is the main topic of the video. <clears throat> but I also want to make a point here that Luis Enrique possibly is the most dangerous here in PSG. Because Luis Enrique can change the game. If we can block Mbappe, okay, he can change it around. He can change Mbappe from position or he can change the distribution or he can change the tactic. Luis Enrique is a very serious coach. Not only that, is that he knows Barcelona really well. We know him really well too. So to me, possibly, Luis Enrique is the most dangerous here. But of course, Kylian Mbappe is right there. The best forward in the world playing against Barcelona. And in this video, I also have a couple news, guys. A couple, a couple news for you guys. Um, the first news, I'm going to give that right now. And the last news, I'm going to give it at the end of the video. And the fact that is uh, Frankie de Jong, who is gonna most probably gonna be available and as a starter to play against Paris Saint Germain on Wednesday. Um, Paris Saint Germain, uh, sorry, Frankie de Jong has been training really well lately, and uh, Xavi sees him as a determinant player. So Frankie de Jong will most probably start versus Paris Saint Germain, and uh, the midfield will be reinforced. Because let me tell you that if you play. Uh, Fermin Lopez versus Frankie de Jong, even though I really like Fermin Lopez, the, the spirit, the, 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 you know, the, the, the way that this guy is playing, the force, the fireness, the desire, I think Frankie de Jong is a little step ahead, possibly a step, a wider step ahead. Therefore, it's great news that, uh, that uh, Frankie de Jong uh, will be playing um, against PSG, most probably as a starter, because yet again, he is training really well and he is fully in shape so moving on to to mr mbappe and um, things are are heating up a little bit with the pre-game here um, um today mbappe was asked about the, the tie against bars and he said the time has come for the great players and i am prepared for it as usual i'm not going to hide we're not expecting you to hide but mr mbappe in the big games in the Champions League, at least, you haven't been showing up too much lately. Huh? And, and, and how many Champions Leagues have you played so far? Seven Champions Leagues. How many titles? Zero. You got one time to the final. Let me give you the credit. 
But instead, you didn't shine in the final. You didn't shine Kylian Mbappe in the final. That, that PSG lost, by the way. It was Neymar who shined in the final. But anyways, anyways, if you say that, that uh, you won't hide, then uh, I will trust you. And, and you know, there, are, there is a serious um, optimism in Paris. Um, there's a lot of optimism, a serious optimism in Paris, the head of the tie against Barcelona. And I must say, guys, um, it's good that we're coming as an underdog. But internally, internally, we must go and kill them, guys. We, ha we need this mentality to go in to the pitch and destroy Paris Saint-Germain. And, you know, it makes, me, it, it, it makes me remind myself about Real Madrid. You know, when they say, oh, Real Madrid, this season is not playing really well. You know, I don't see, uh, I don't see many chances for them to win a lot of titles. But careful in the Champions League, because it's their competition, they say. It's their competition, you know. You, you, can, you, can, you can never give uh, Real Madrid in vain, you know. Because they're, they're such a big game, they're such a big team. What about Barca versus PSG here? What about Barca? How many, how many Champions Leagues does Barca have? Five. How many does PSG have? Zero. How many uh, legendary players have played in Barcelona? Countless. Guys, we even got uh, a, a treble of a top three golden ball uh, year. With, with Messi, Iniesta, Xavi. How many golden balls are there in, in, in Barcelona from players that won the golden ball in Barcelona? 12 golden balls. How many in Paris Saint-Germain? Zero. Or maybe one, I don't know. Zero, I could say. You know? Which, which team has most fans around the world and which team has most titles historically? Barcelona versus Paris Saint-Germain. Therefore, we can apply the same, this, the same theory, no? The same theory. So let them, you know what? Let them be motivated. Let, let these Paris Saint-Germain people feel superior. Boom! Because we're going to come and we're going to smash them like a hammer. And now Barcelona, and now Barcelona, it's our moment to internally think about it, mentally get prepared. They play two more games than us in the last days. They're going to be a little bit more tired, not too much. It's a moment to come and smash them. And of course, Xavi, Xavi is preparing the best way possible to stop disequilibrium players like Mbappe, like Guzman Dembélé. And this is what I want to show you guys. This is what I want to show you today. So, first of all, first of all, let me break down the starting 11, my starting 11 for, for the game against Paris Saint-Germain. Um, here we have, uh, of course, Cancelo, Kubarsi, Araujo and Kunde. And careful here, careful here with these two, uh, Kunde and Araujo. Many of you possibly would think, oh, you, put, you can put Araujo here on the right back position to cover Mbappe like, like you would normally do if, if you were playing against Real Madrid with Vinicius, right? You play Araujo here. But I was thinking deeply and I was looking at Paris Saint-Germain play and I thought, Maybe a one-to-one -one is not going to be the way. I think the best way to stop Kylian Mbappe is with the second man, okay? And the second man is going to be the most crucial, okay? Who is your best defender in, the, in Barcelona right now? It's Araujo, okay? It's Araujo, okay? So what I would do is you put Kunde against Mbappe and Araujo helping as the second uh, man. And the second man has a very important task, very, very important task. And you know how Mbappe plays. He's very good in the depth. He goes very well in the depth, you know. He's very fast, you know, stop and start, stop and start, very quick. And certainly um, he's going to escape from Kunde a few times during the game. But if Araujo has been monitoring the position, monitoring nicely the position, and it's preparing ahead of the runs of Kylian Mbappe, I think that our chances to stop uh, Mbappe are way higher than if we, if we just play our, our first man here, Araujo versus Mbappe, and you play Kunde as a second man. I think this would be it, okay? 
by the way, by the way, let me tell you, is that in many games we have been seeing uh, uh, Mbappe playing through the middle and the same with, with the same thing with Dembele. Well, let me talk about Dembele in just a second. Okay, so we have already um, we have seen Mbappe going through the middle. So where do you want Araujo? In the middle. Okay, in the middle because it's the most important position, the middle positions. Okay, in terms of Dembele, and, and you know what? Wait, let me let me break it down for you. I know many of you would say, okay, no, just play Araujo together with Kylian Mbappe the whole game. Mbappe chasing Araujo the whole game. I think, I think Barcelona needs to come out to play their own style. I don't think we need to change structures, okay? Don't change structures, because this, this is not going to work. It's such an important game. We need to play the way we know how to play. If we do experiments, we're going to get demolished. Okay, no experiments, certainly no experiments. This is the way of playing. And here, there's the third man, okay? The third man would be Christiansen. And I see Frenkie the young Christiansen there in the midfield and Gundogan playing as a more of an offensive uh, midfielder here on the top. So important that Christiansen can give the support, especially when Araujo is doing the second man defense and Christiansen can come in and slightly cover the center back position and Frenkie de Jong in the mid and of course Gundogan coming down a little bit to help. So this would be it, okay? This would be it. This is how I would try to um, to, to defend um, uh, Kylian Mbappe. Okay, not go crazy, not go crazy because if we're, if we're following Mbappe all around, then he's going to play us around, he's going to go here, and then we're going to leave a big space here in the middle, okay? We don't want that, we don't want that. And, and especially we need to be monitoring the whole time, even when we are attacking, because Mbappe is really good uh, looking at the spaces when everybody's up, you know, everybody's up. And, 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 and Kylian Mbappe is monitoring the spaces where he can make the run. We need to be very, very careful with that, okay? Even when we're attacking. So I don't want to do one-to-one -one defense, one um, yeah, man-on-man -man defense versus Mbappe, but maybe I want to do versus, Kylian, uh, versus uh, Dembele. Why do I want to do defense man-on-man -man versus Dembele? Because I was thinking, you know, you know how Dembele is. We all know how Dembele is. A lot of disequilibrium, you know, he can create a crazy run and a crazy dribble, but possibly 70% of the time he's going to lose possession, right? He's going to lose possession. Therefore, we need to mark Dembele right on top, right on him, okay? Right on him. Of course, Colomani, careful, huh? Colomani, careful. Very dangerous. But we need, we, need, we need to defend him very nicely, okay? Why? Why do you want to defend him very nicely? Because in case he loses the possession, which he's going to do 70% of the times, there's going to be a chance for us to counterattack. Okay, of course, of course, Cancelo can go up through the side. And Rafinha here, Rafinha, a lot of mobility, even coming down onto the midfield when De Jong is defending. Um, Rafinha um, being able to, to be the, the third midfielder if De Jong and Christensen are below defending. Okay, I think Rafinha has a great momentum and can play through the side, can play through the middle, can even become the, th the, the fourth midfielder that we need. You know how Xavi likes to play the square. By the way, guys, let me know your questions down below. I'm looking forward to see them. Um, if you're enjoying the way I'm breaking it down, then smash the likes and subscribe. And you can also become a member if you want to. So, of course, I want to cover maybe tomorrow the way we can attack. Okay, just think that Hakimi, um, they possibly have um, the second most important player missing for the game of, uh, of Wednesday, okay? I know many of you watched my, my ideal uh, 11 with Paris Saint-Germain and Barcelona and a lot of you were saying, oh, you, you, didn't, you didn't study for the video because you forgot about Hakimi having uh, a sanction and not being able to play. Well, I knew Hakimi wasn't being able to play. The thing is that I, I was comparing the whole tie, okay, and the, and the momentum of the teams. But, but Hakimi is not going to be able to play. Therefore, certainly, this side here with Dembele losing 70% of the possessions and the fact that Hakimi is not going to be there to back him up is possibly our best side, our best side to create danger. For Cancelo and Rafinha are going to be critical, okay, critical. And I think Gundogan 
needs to be the one creating the game over here. And of course, Lamin Yamal playing very, very wide. Okay, so he can he can pull the defenders and Lewandowski have more space and maybe Rafinha coming in through the middle, joining Lewandowski and Cancelo moving up. So, of course, this is the way we want to attack. But the most important is the defense and not get exposed behind, you know, because Paris Saint-Germain has, has a very good thing that they do is that they pressure high a lot. They pressure high really well, okay? And um, they, they're going to do that constantly. Uh, the PSG is not a team that, that defends, you know. They're not like that. They're just they're agile. They're speedy. They, they know what they're doing. And especially Luis Enrique, the way he defends, um, the, the way he plays, sorry, is, uh, is, is a defense that's based on possession and that's based on, on stealing the ball high so they can make a forward pass onto, onto Kylian Mbappe. Okay, so important. Most important thing, the second man defense with Kunde and Araujo, the second man, and second most important, monitoring. Always monitor what's going on. Be looking out for what's going on, which players are alone, and certainly Kylian Mbappe. And if he makes the run, make a push, make a little push. This equilibrium, you know, make him a little push, you know, or, 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 or make sure that our second man is well positioned. Otherwise, Mbappe is going to kill us. And I'm sure, and I'm sure for that, that at some points, Mbappe is going to run away from Kunde and Araujo. I think it's going to happen. The thing is, how close to the goal does he do that? And how desperate is he in doing that? Okay? If he does it comfortably, then not good business. But anyways, anyways. Um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, the plan. Uh, of course, a lot of things can happen. This would be my plan on how to stop Kylian Mbappe. I, I've tried getting a lot of inputs, even, even from people that are very tactical. I tried getting all the inputs and tried making the best hypothesis here on how Barcelona could stop Kylian Mbappe. Of course, not Mbappe only. It's Dembele, it's Colomuani, it's, uh, it's uh, Said Hemery, it's uh, Vitinha. You know, but I think the front three are the most important here. And I think Barcelona certainly can do it. We have good chances. I'd say it's 50-50 right here, guys. If not, let me know your, 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 your guesses. So I know that Barcelona has a real chance. And it's great that we are the underdogs. It's just great that we are the underdogs. Okay? And in terms of Xavi, it can change the future of Xavi. Because I'm going to give you some news, guys and news that are coming from Diario Sport, and they're very recent, guys. They're probably an hour uh, ago. It's the fact that Juan Laporta, Juan Laporta clearly, clearly knows that Xavi Hernández is the best to coach Football Club Barcelona next season. He has monitored the situation, monitored the different alternatives that there are in the market, and has made the decision and, uh, and knows that the remedy is worse than the disease. So the alternative would be worse than Xavi, according to Laporta. Okay, okay. What other alternatives do we have? Realistic alternatives, taking into account that we're broke. Okay, realistic alternatives are Hansi Flick, without a job, you know, high quality coach doesn't speak Spanish, barely speaks any English, um, had one good year, pandemic year with Bayern Munich, with a very well-built team from previous uh, past, um, previous years. And, and the rest of his co coaching career has been, I don't know, somewhat in the air. So Laporta knows that the best chance that he has for us to keep succeeding next season is to keep Xavi Hernández in charge. But he needs to convince Xavi Hernández. He needs to change his mind around. How can he do it? Well, I know Laporta is a very convincing guy because he's a lawyer. <laughs> if he can convince people, he's been convincing judges uh, all his life. And now he needs to convince the most important judge in, in uh, right now, which is Xavi Hernandez himself. So 
Laporta has one mission and is to convince Xavi Hernandez. Of course, if Barcelona get to the semifinals, I think it's going to be easier. Semifinals of the Champions League is going to be easier for Laporta to convince Xavi Hernandez. I'm confident, I'm confident that we have great chances to get to the, to the semifinals. And I'm confident that Juan Laporta will get very close, very, very close to convincing Xavi Hernandez. The thing is, will he actually convince him or will he not? Or do you guys believe the alternative to Xavi Hernandez is better than Xavi himself? Maybe it's not only about getting to the semifinals of the Champions League. Maybe it's just enough with playing well, no? Playing better than we did at the beginning of the season or halfway through the season. I think we're certainly improving. I think we can give credit to Xavi Hernandez for one more season. Looking at the alternatives that we have. By the way, if we wait one more year, guess who's, who finishes contract? Luis Enrique. Guess who finishes contract? Pep Guardiola. And many more. And many, many more. But just these two coaches, just these two options, Pep Guardiola and Luis Enrique, finishing contracts in one year? Careful, guys. Careful. Careful, because... I think we're all interested on, on Xavi staying for one more season. But anyways, guys, not going to make it any longer. Make sure to smash the like, subscribe. I hope that you enjoyed the video. You can also become a member and support this channel. And now, and as I always say, Bisca Barça, Bisca Catalonia, PSG, we're coming, baby. Coo, 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 Let's do it. See you in the next video. Vamos.